we have our form, our mold. It's a wooden box, three inches deep. On the inside, it measures three inches by 12 inches, but you can see that there's a little bit of extra space. So maybe it's three and a sixteenth by 12 and three thirty seconds. In the bottom is a spacing of holes. Oh, that goes in way too far. That's why we have shims. That's the right amount of space to put in for the manifold to go into the casting. This dimension is two inches. That means this dimension is one inch. That's, well, okay, maybe that's seven-eighths of an inch, right there. That's how far down into the casting we're going to put this piece. So approximately one inch of the steel manifold will go into the casting. Right. Or or three quarters of an inch. Anyway, what we're getting to is the straws go into the holes. These holes are not drilled all the way through the piece of pine on the bottom. And we will place these straws in every one of the holes. The collective area of all of the small holes equals the area of the inch and a half pipe on the ID. That's how I determined how many small holes and what diameter they would be. The size of the straw had something to do with what I was using. These are plastic straws easily gotten from a fast food restaurant. We have our form with the straws embedded in the holes that are in the bottom. I'm going to spray the release. The release helps the sides of the form and the straws separate from the castable once it is cured. The release is known as WD-40. I have mixed the castable. I mixed it to a consistency of wet scrambled eggs. You might say it's kind of like stiff oatmeal. This is a tedious process of putting the castable among the straws Trying not too much to fill up the straws with castable, though the straws will slip out of the castable once it has set up.
there's water dripping out from our form. Yeah. Don't do this in the kitchen. There's a lot of water dripping out from the form. So now do we clamp or wait? Or put weight on this or anything, or we just leave it set? You let it set. Okay. Let it set up. Don't let it freeze. Don't try to cook it real hot right now. Just let it set like any masonry product. Okay. Now this is the part where you want to be really careful. Don't hit it with a hammer or anything to get this part off because um, you can easily crack and break the parts that you've been very careful about. So this is just a very gently You see how that's starting to separate there? Certainly don't drop it. Oh, look at that, see? Look at that. Pretty darn nice. That's steam coming off of the refractory. We've had it sitting on the stove just to get it to warm up and the steam's, all the water's coming out of the refractory. This is why we'll be doing a section where we bake the refractory in an oven in order to drive off any other residual water and moisture in the casting. Yeah. Here I have the ribbon burner set up inside of my heat treating furnace. I'll be using the programmable temperature control on the furnace in order to do the firing of the castable. If you don't have a heat treating furnace like this, you can do the first two steps of the heat treat of the firing process I'm going to go through. It's worked really well for Dan in the past on castables and had good success surviving. Uh, what's really important about this firing process is that the first temperature you go up to is less than the boiling of water. 
that is to help just drive off steam and push out any other additional heat and you hold there for three hours but just below the boiling temperature of water then you move up the temperature to greater than the boiling point of water going for about 300 degrees Fahrenheit and you want to hold for three hours at that temperature in order, in order to help bake out any chemical water which is what you're doing is firing the castable. What I'm going to do here is follow the firing guidelines more for uh, Mizu 3000 which is a type of refractory and it has a little more stringent heat treating or firing requirements and since I have a heat treating furnace that can control the temperature at which it climbs and hold for at a temperature for a certain period of time that's what I'm going to use in order to fire this. I'm going to take you through the firing program I've set up here. It's a bit of a combination between what Dan has used for firing his burners and had good success with and the firing process for a Mizu 3000 castable. So I'm going to go into my program here that I've already set up. The first ramp all the ramps are set up for 75 degrees Fahrenheit per hour. The first target temperature I set for 198 degrees Fahrenheit because of my elevation water boils a little less than 212 Fahrenheit so just to be on the safe side I've set it low. Um, I want this first temperature to just kind of drive off as much water as possible. So that will hold for three hours. I then ramp up again at 75 degrees Fahrenheit per hour and then I will hold at 300 degrees Fahrenheit for three hours. So this is something that you can do in a home conventional oven. You can't control the ramp time but Dan has had good success on his burners in setting it so that you hold it for three hours at a temperature just below the boiling point of water and then you crank up the oven to 300 degrees Fahrenheit and hold for three hours and that gives good strong results I'm trying a little bit uh, more rigorous firing process here in order to get hopefully less cracking when firing the burner the first time if you only have a home oven after you install your burner the first time you fire it you want to slowly and gradually heat up the castable and even with this setting I'm going to do that as well and I'll fire it for a short period of time let the forge heat work its way into the castable and work through several firings before running the forge full blast so to continue through this uh, setup I have here still moving at 75 degrees stopping at 800 for the next hold for three hours and then ramping up at 75 degrees and stopping at the last hold of a thousand degrees Fahrenheit for three hours and that's it and that will end my program